If I was a top gas dragster driver back in 1960, especially if I was pulling up at the starting line at Long Beach, California, Lions Drag Strip, and I looked over in the other lane, Greg, the last car I'd want to see would be the Albertson Olds. Why would that be? Because it was the dominant dragster at Lions in 1960 during the heart of the fuel ban. Uh, Lyons was arguably the top gasoline strip in the country. It was nothing for it to be 20 to 25 dragsters on a Saturday night. And this car had a remarkable record against all of them. Believe it or not, this car only ran for a six month period in this configuration. And it ran upwards of maybe 30 dates and won all but six of them. And it was a triumvirate of amazing people. And it starts right here in the cockpit with Leonard Harris. Talk a little bit about him. He had been a championship gymnast in high school and running national awards, and he was a natural. He was one of those guys that just was a natural racer. And the other part of the team was Ronnie Screema, who, who owned the chassis, and Gene Adams, who was Mr. Oldsmobile. And he built the Oldsmobile engines for this car. He had run his old 50 Olds in 1957 and uh, set the A-gas record at Oklahoma City, and he was just the guy for Oldsmobiles. And the chassis is actually a Scotty Finn Chassis Research K88 that Ronnie Screema modified, which didn't sit well with Scotty Finn. Ronnie Screema had the theory that the car should flex, so he cut an extra bar off of the frame rails and the uprights. And as Jack said, Scotty Finn went nuts because he was convinced it was his way or no way. And, uh, and it worked. But this car was absolutely magic for the six months it was out there. And it wasn't just at Lions. No. Uh, it actually had won the, the NHRA Nationals in Detroit in 1960. It seems like Leonard was universally regarded back in 1960 as one of the best drivers of his day. And remember, the racetracks weren't sprayed with the traction compound. And a lot of drivers would feather the clutch. Some would even ride the brake during the run to get the max acceleration without excessive tire spin. And Leonard was a master of that. You see photos of this car, you can see black stripes behind it, but no tire smoke whatsoever. He was just right on the edge of traction he needed to be. When he came up to the starting line, guys would always jazz the throttle and make a big deal of it. And he just idled until the last second. Leonard actually tragically lost his life October 22nd, 1960 at Lions, driving another dragster. This car had broke during what was gonna be a match race with the Howard Cam car. Leonard hopped in another car and was fatally injured on a run, but that actually wasn't the end of this specific combination running and winning races. No, it wasn't. Uh, after Leonard was killed, Alberts and Olds wanted out. They were their sponsor. It was a longtime Oldsmobile dealer in Culver City, and uh, they didn't want their name associated with the car anymore. Ronnie Screema had lost a friend, and he didn't want to be associated with it anymore. So Tom the Mongoose McEwen was the next driver of this car, teamed up with Gene Adams. And they ran that car from September till March when they sold it. This is just as the car would have looked in 1960, but it wasn't found in this condition. No, it was sold uh, from an ad in Drag News in March of uh, 1961, and a fellow named Bill Finley in Alabama bought it less engine. And he says he ran it on every cow path and drag strip he could find in Alabama for the next couple of years. And he just didn't have the heart to get rid of it when he quit racing and put it in his wrecking yard. Don Radican, who was another famous Oldsmobile racer, went down and got the car and did the restoration. So it's as close to 1960 Nationals as we could make it. But the amazing thing is when you look back, this was literally from April to October of 1960. It was a six month window this team of three won more races than a lot of racers won in their whole career. Absolutely. So the ability to come to the Wally Parks NHRA Museum and get this close to history, it's not just about the cars. It's not just about the people. It's that synergy. It's that there was a time in history when three guys that worked regular jobs could put their heads, their hearts, their hands, and their pocketbooks together and literally go out there and make history. The big moment for the big winner of the 1960 National Meet. Albertson Olds entry from Culver City, California, won top eliminator honors with a 9.81 elapsed time in the final heat. And so, judging by the expression, is the title of Mr. Eliminator, top driver of 1960's Big Go.